My dad was a great man. Uh, he was a godly man, um, raised three children, put us through college. Uh, besides being uh, a coach, an educator, he also was president over the uh, Lake County Commission Board. Uh, he spent a lot of time uh, teaching kids in the centers. He was a karate instructor for 10, 12 years. So he did a lot. Uh, he liked kids. He liked teaching, and not just in the school setting, but uh, teaching kids about life. Uh, he was like one for the ages. Um, the things that he endured, from what I understand, um, um, everybody cannot do that. And uh, it's shown through the years that he had to be a special person. I believe just the patience and the striving, it's just like was always into something. He ran for councilman at one time. Uh, he worked two jobs. Um, it was like always trying to support his family and helping others. It's just so many people that I didn't know that knew him. He talked about the games that he could go to, the games that he couldn't go to, the states that he couldn't go to to play in, like for instance, Kentucky, which is just a state right below us. Uh, Virginia was another one. Uh, he had made mention that a lot of the team players kind of felt bad about it, but back in those days, you know, you did what you had to do to survive. We stopped at this restaurant and we were getting served, going to be served. And uh, all of a sudden, when Clarence came in with the rest of the ball club, the, gym, the manager says, we don't feed black people. I said, well, we don't need here. None of us do. So we all got up and walked out with our food, left our food there on the table and everything. So he didn't do very well with us. Blacks weren't really allowed to do a lot. They had to stay in their own dorm. It was no uh, integration at that point. They did go to the same classes, but that was basically it. Even when he played in the games, they would go to uh, visitors like they came all the way to Indiana to Valparaiso. Even though he was from Indiana, that meant nothing. He had to play, he had to dress in another locker room could not eat in the uh, same restaurants that the team would eat in. Well, when I found out <clears throat> after the invitation that uh, a black uh, American could not play, I already turned it down. And uh, they tried to put a little pressure on me in some ways to come, but I, I still refused to do it. For Coach Wood to make a stand that since Clarence was part of the team. And if this part of the team made the whole team, and if my whole team could not come and participate in this tournament that they had an invitation to, then nobody would go. So he didn't spend a lot of time speaking about that as much as the man John Wooden was to take that stand his teammates that didn't bicker about it, that agreed with the stand. And it pretty much panned out because the next year they came around, as I can recall, they were invited again. I were invited again and I refused because of the same reasons. And uh, they relented and said that they could, uh, he could come, but he couldn't stay in the hotel with us and he couldn't have his meals with us. He could, uh, uh, if we'd go to a private room, it would be all right. And, uh, but he couldn't stay in the hotel, and so I refused again. Well, Clarence, at times, we didn't know where he was because nobody told us Coach Wood took care of the situation where uh, he had to take him to different areas to sleep or he would sleep downstairs in the uh, basement of, of the hotel, which was not right, we uh, decided that he should be with us, and if, if he wasn't going to be with us, then we weren't going to play the ball game. So that's how we felt, 
that he is one of us, whether black or white. He had to eat outside of the restaurant, in the back of the restaurant. He had to eat. He had to sleep in a, um, a boiler one night. Um, which hurt me. Uh, because he couldn't stay in the room with the kid or sleeping. He sleep in the basement with a boiler. But he still liked basketball enough he wanted to play. The NAACP uh, talked to our president, and our president talked to me, and they thought it would, might be a good thing. It might, in a sense, open the doors a little bit. Our father, his parents, a lot of the groups that felt like this would be a big stand, not only for the team, but for just unity across the United States, breaking all color barriers that they should still go and he should participate, in which they did. And the ironic thing about it was, it's a gap on how he got a chance to stay at a preacher's house in between this time. So even though like John Wooden had all of this pull and these ties to be able to, for him to find a black preacher in Kansas City that would welcome this man into his home who he did not know. That was significant also. I, I know at times I didn't know where he was staying, but I know that I knew that he was there to play the game. Uh, I must say that a few years later, an all-colored team won that in AIA tournament. And uh, it's funny, I, I kept them for a long time, but then I finally threw them away. I thought it was silly. I got some nasty letters blaming me for this all happening by opening the door, but I thought that was a compliment. Because the main thing was the success was in the journey not so much the destination. It was how you're gonna get there. One of my proudest moments in a sense is after one national championship game and then reporters were talking to my players in the dressing room. One was talking to one of my African-American players and he, he said to him, uh, uh, tell me about your racial problems on your team. And this uh, player of mine, straightened up and said, you don't know our coach, do you? He doesn't see color, he sees ball players." And he turned and walked away. Uh, that pleased me. I was, I, I was happy to, to, to see that. And uh, I, I think my dad, more than anything else, uh, uh, to him there was people were people. What I remember the most about him was his smile was his patience, his attitude, his never say die. He would always tell us, don't hunt, don't grumble, be humble, and you won't stumble. <laughs>